How my fur look? My fur look all right on revolt? My fur, you playing. Bro. Okay. You playing. Donkey of the day for Friday, December 7th goes to Peter. Now, Peter, I don't want no smoke. Uh, I acknowledge that today is Faux Fur Friday, and I have on some Faux Fur. Okay, the fur I oh, rock okay. on my coach is definitely Faux, so don't pull up on me throwing paint like y'all used to do, okay? Because throwing paint is an assault. And if you think I won't press charges on your plant-based ass, uh, you a devil damn lie, okay? You are hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. I will press charges if you throw paint on me. Now, the reason Peter is getting donkey of the day is because Peter is calling for the end of of anti-animal anti animal language, okay? In fact, they're saying that anti-animal language is being compared to racism and homophobia. They call this new trend a uh, speciesism. Peter released a statement that said, just as it became unacceptable to use racist, homophobic language, phrases that trivialize cruelty to animals will vanish as more people begin to appreciate animals. Uh, I can't make this kind of stuff up. Let's go to Reuters for the report, please. Animal rights group PETA, known for its provocative displays, has set the internet ablaze with its latest stunt. Arguing against anti-animal language and common aphorisms, they tweeted, quote, Words matter, and as our understanding of social justice evolves, our language evolves along with it. Here's how to remove speciesism from your daily conversations. Instead of saying, kill two birds with one stone, how about feed two birds with one scone? Oh God. Instead of bringing home the bacon, how about bringing home the bagels? Oh God. Instead of taking the bull by the horns, how about taking the flower by the thorns? The organization's suggestions prompted mockery online, though others liked the idea, offering aphoristic edits of their own, like curiosity thrilled the cat. Well, anyway, you get the idea. No need to beat a dead horse. I mean, feed a fed horse. <sighs> Fart all over this idea. <clears throat> Fart all over it. Uh, somebody at PETA has been drinking like a fish. Who's drunk at PETA? Okay, I really feel like I'm in a spoof. This is why people don't like vegans right here. Some of you animal lovers need to get off your high horses, all right? People who don't eat meat are annoying, all right? I love animals, too. I actually hate zoos and safaris. I hate seeing animals captive, but I love my steak medium well. I love barbecue chicken. Medium I, well? Yes. Who, no, it's medium. Okay, medium. All right. Yeah. But I love barbecue chicken, too. All right, I will absolutely devour a lamb and a goat. All right, yes, I love my food to have a face, but I really do feel like a fish out of water when it comes to what Peter is trying to do by ending species, speciesism. All right, seriously, Peter, hold your horses for a second and listen to me. All right, there's a huge difference when it comes to racism, homophobia, and anti-animal language. Now, I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, but I don't believe a dead horse would get offended for me using the term, I hate to be the dead horse. All right, I don't think birds would get upset hearing me use the term kill two birds with one stone. I don't think a guinea pig would understand the term be the guinea pig. Why do I not think these animals would understand me? Because I'm not Dr. Doolittle. All right, I'm not an animal whisperer. We don't speak the same language, okay? I don't know what animals is talking about, and animals don't know what I'm talking about. As far as I'm concerned, the cat has gotten every single animal's tongue that I have ever encountered because they never said anything to me. They never told me they had a problem. How do we know if sheeps get offended when we count them? Oh, so elephants have an issue with being addressed as the problem in the room? Has a chicken ever came up to you and said, look, bruh, don't count me before I'm hatched? Why would I ever take the flower by the thorns? All right, thorns stick. Make your fingers bleed. Why do you want me to hurt myself, Peter? Now, I don't want to be in the doghouse with Peter. I'm just not understanding how you all are making decisions for animals. And is it just animals or animal products? Is it offensive for me to say I'm going to beat my meat? What about choking my chicken? Because even though I'm talking about meat and chicken, I'm referring to my penis. Now, I know people at PETA are running around like, like a chicken with his head cut off hearing me do this donkey today. And I would love to be a fly on the wall in their offices to hear what they're saying. Now, is fly on the wall offensive? Because we don't eat flies, all right? Peter, I agree with you. Words matter. And as our understanding of social justice evolves, our language should evolve along with it. I agree with that. But what's the point of removing speciesism from our daily conversations if we're not going to remove meat from our daily conversations, okay? Peter, I'm telling you right now, people using anti-animal language is not going to happen. You know when people will stop using anti-animal language? When pigs fly, all right? Can I talk to my kids about the birds and the bees? Peter, I really think you guys are reaching, and these crocodile tears you are shedding over anti-animal language is ridiculous, okay? I totally understand y'all not wanting people to kill animals for clothes. I understand y'all not wanting to kill, not wanting people to kill animals to eat, but not wanting us to use anti-animal language. I would love to have someone from PETA on The Breakfast Club to discuss this further because I don't know if this is a publicity stunt or a real concern that you guys have. I'm really curious about this, and you know what curiosity killed? The cat.
But guess what? No cat has ever told me curiosity killed him. So all these years we have been blaming curiosity for a crime they didn't commit. Peter, how far does this go? If I'm at Captain D's, can I say I'm eating hush puppies? Will the puppies get offended because I told them to hush? Can I say it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world without offending people? Dogs do eat dogs. Us humans call that foreplay. If I say spelling bee, am I offending the illiterate bees who can't spell? What about the early bird getting the worm? Who should be offended by that? The bird or the worm? What if it's a bird who doesn't eat worms? What if the worm wants to get got? That's why he showed up early. That worm may have wanted to be chosen. The moral of the story is this. Peter, a leopard can't change his spots. All right, this anti-animal language thing is not really a thing. There are no wolves, no wolves really wearing sheep's clothing. There are plenty of fish in the sea for us to eat, by the way. And I don't even own chickens for them to come home to roost. And for those who do own chickens, they will come to, they will come home to roost. So what's the problem? Please give Peter the biggest sound of this unedible animal. <coughs> <coughs> Now, are donkeys offended that I use them yes. as a term to call yes. people stupid? Yes. I'm just trying to figure out where does this end. Yes. All yeah. right. Okay. Enough monkeying around now. Let's get serious. Enough monkeying around? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get serious.